Okay, now you guys can hear, right? Can you hear me? Type something in the Type something. Uh, type something on the back, uh, on the phone. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dean. Uh, you're welcome. All right. Uh, a very good morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, so for today, we will have our second session uh, for computer networks. Uh, I've seen that uh, most of you are online. I <laughs> okay. Uh, and the rest of you are here. Uh, thank you very much for coming for today's session. So basically, uh, what we would like to do today is that we would like to cover chapter two, uh, where in chapter two, we will uh, try to define physical layer. Okay? So we'll start with the, uh, sum not summarize, lah. We, we'll try to back up a bit of what we have learned in, uh, chapter, uh, in week one uh, that we have gone through last week. Okay? And then we will start in chapter, uh, to go chapter two. Okay, so that you're able to synchronize uh, the idea between uh, these two chapters, right? Okay, is this okay? Can I uh, close this down? So I hope it's okay. Right. So for today's session, basically what we would like to do is that uh, we would like to go through in depth about physical layer. Uh, before we start, how many of you have gone through uh, the lab session, lab one? Can I see a hand? Not many. Still have some uh, Some students haven't gone through lab one. Have you gone through lab one? Not yet. When is your lab? 
Okay, right? Okay. So basically, uh, in lab one, uh, we already seen how we can configure our uh, network uh, in in order to make sure that it can be connected. Okay, that one when we do what we call IPv4 setting, uh, that is where we uh, define the network layer addressing. Okay, so uh, in uh, network layer addressing, we use IP. Okay, uh, and we define what is the IP addressing uh, towards all these different devices so that you're able to uh, make sure that uh, it's interconnected, right? Okay, so with respect to that, uh, what we want to uh, go through right now is that uh, we want to look at the uh, the the bottom layer of the network TCP uh, IP or OSI layer. Okay, can you still remember the uh, layering of TCP IP or OSI layer? Huh? Can you spell out uh, one by one the layering from layer one until layer uh, the until the seven layer of the OSI layer? Do you remember that? No? Yes? Huh? I give you a, a term last time where we say that all people seem to need uh, I believe Data processing, yeah. Data processing okay. So basically when we define the seven layer, we need to identify each and every layer, right? I think they don't see me, right? <laughs> so I better draw over here. Bear with me. All right. So, uh, all people sorry for my bad handwriting. All people seems to need data processing. So this one is that we want to define the network, uh, the OSI layer, okay? Where you have seven layer in total. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So this A represents that this is application. Application. Then we have then layer right and then we have the session layer here then we have the transport layer network layer and also uh, the data layer and finally is the physical one so the one that we would like to discuss today is the bottom one, which is the physical layer. Okay. So what do you know about physical layer? It's basically is the hardware or the very uh, simple uh, medium to be transferred. Okay. It defines the medium, the interface uh, before you can uh, do the transmission. Okay. So if you have gone through the uh, our lab you will see that when you try to connect uh, between two devices, you have a medium, right? You have to configure the medium 
And when you click the medium to be connected, usually they will ask what would be the interface. Okay, uh, there's option like you have USB port, you have uh, internet port and so forth. Okay, so basically for physical layer, uh, one of the protocol example is what we call fast internet. Okay, so you have to choose the fast internet, then uh, you define the interface for your uh, physical layer. Okay, so that is uh, basically when you wanted to have this uh, physical layer. Okay, so uh, from this uh, point on, okay, we will see that uh, for your uh, physical layer, uh, it defines uh, not just for the basic layer, but also how uh, what kind of signal that you can use to interface between all these different devices. Okay, so we will touch a bit on uh, signal. Okay, uh, where we will talk a bit about what's the difference between analog and digital signal. Okay, and then uh, with respect to the signal, we will see also how does the signal can be uh, represented in a time domain or a frequency domain. Okay. And then uh, we will also see a bit of what we call simple signal and also a composite signal. Okay. Um, and uh, mainly for our uh, network, okay, what we need to do is that we need to identify how's the performance of our uh, transmission. Okay. So we will try to analyze. Okay. Uh, and while doing the analysis, what we can see is that there are things that uh, tempered uh, the signal itself, okay? uh, kind of like we have what we call uh, a delay jitter and uh, impairment. Okay? So that will actually affect our performance of your network. Okay? So these are the things that we will cover. Okay? Right. So a signal basically, uh, when we talk, right? Okay? Actually, when I'm, I'm talking to you guys, uh, we are actually transmitting uh, information. Okay, what is the medium that we use is actually the air, or we are we are talking through a medium of wireless lah. Okay, so this signal okay cannot be uh, replicated directly if you need to convert it into digital signal, which is the medium of our uh, transmission. Okay, we need to have some uh, uh, extra devices like in our phone, our computer, so that we able to transmit the information. Okay, so if I just throw out my voice right now, uh, you can only reach, uh, or I can only reach you, uh, you guys that are currently uh, on physical. But those who are at home, okay, uh, perhaps is uh, if we don't have the Google Meet, okay, and uh, all this technology, uh, I cannot reach those people that are out, uh, that are out there, lah. So. We need this uh, uh, some tools so that we are able to communicate. Uh, so we, with respect to that, uh, the signal okay, uh, that we wanted to transfer, uh, we need to change it. Okay, uh, either uh, is an analog or digital one. Okay, and then we need to transfer it through a medium, which again it can be analog or digital uh, transmission media. Okay, so the signal. Okay. Uh, we'll need to have a physical interface. Okay, so if we uh, see in uh, most of your PCs, okay, if you guys have a, a personal computer that can uh, actually add interface, uh, add some uh, additional uh, equipment. Okay, one of the interface that you need to put is your uh, uh, your your data uh, capture card, okay, or the for instance your Wi-Fi network. Uh, card or you have to have your internet card. Okay, so you have to add that. Uh, in some PC, for instance, uh, if you don't have the uh, the the Wi-Fi adapter, you need to have a Wi-Fi adapter before you can uh, communicate. Okay, so that would be uh, the physical layer that we would like to see. Okay. Yeah, so the for transmission data needs to be changed to signal. Okay, so now my voice needs to be changed into some electronic representation. Okay, and then we'll, uh, the signal will be passed through the medium and those who are out there can uh, reach out to me. Okay. So the signal, as I mentioned, uh, it can be uh, analog or it can be digital. So how do I get the uh, 
the camera to follow me. <laughs> I get the camera to follow me. Yeah, I've already raised my hand. Uh, it's not for I think there's something to do. Uh, perhaps later, I have to know how to do that. Okay. So in this diagram, we represent uh, with respect to the different devices how the physical layer being processed. So basically, all the signal has to go to the physical uh, layer of each and every devices throughout uh, your communication link. And then it has to be processed at the physical layer. Okay? Uh, this one should be go much down here on the physical layer. This one also processed at the physical layer. Okay? And uh, when you look at this diagram, you can see that not every devices has all the layers uh, that we mentioned in TCP IP. Uh. What you can see is that if you have an end devices, uh, perhaps you have all the five layers. Okay? But when we talk about other network devices, okay, you will see that not every devices uh, can also be, uh, have any layers on the upper of the network layer. Okay? So this is how uh, it is being defined so that uh, whenever that you transfer, okay, uh, these devices will specifically do focusing on the networking processing, okay? network processing. It doesn't interfere on the application session or perhaps the uh, presentation layer uh, with respect to the uh, OSI model. Okay? So uh, you will see that this is how it's uh, being uh, configured so that you're able to do the processing on each and every devices. So the data transmission right now, okay. So when you have already have your voice, then you can convert it. Okay. Uh, for instance, where you have your uh, microphone and then uh, you have camera, so you can able to convert your mess, uh, your whatever, whatever your message, with, which is your audio video, uh, to be converted into uh, some format. Okay. Uh, can be again analog or digital based on what type. Of uh, devices that you use, okay? but most of the time right now we are converting it into a digi digital format. So then the next thing is that the medium of transfer. Okay? So the medium of transfer can also be either analog or digital. So here it says that uh, the data itself can be an analog or digital signal, okay? and you have to match whatever the medium that you want to transfer. So if it's a di digital medium, then your analog uh, information need to be changed to uh, digital medium or digital signal, uh, then it can transfer. And then it, you have also have to match between your uh, device and also your medium of transfer. Okay? So uh, if we can go back a bit uh, where previously we have what we call uh, PSTN. Uh, PSTN is uh, 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 what is called landline call, okay? where you can call uh, with your analog voice, okay, and the PSTN itself is an analog uh, medium of transfer, okay. So your voice, when uh, it goes through the phone device, okay, uh, which is an analog device, then you can also convert it into. Uh, uh, it, it doesn't need to be converted; it can be transferred to the analog line, okay, and received by the receiver. Okay, but now uh, if you are using a digital device, okay, so your analog signal need to be converted. Okay, and then uh, need to be transferred. Okay, so here uh, you can see that data okay, can be either analog and digital. Also, the device and medium can also be analog or digital, and everything should be matched. Okay, and with that uh, kind of matching, all the protocols should be in line from upper layer to the lower layer. Uh, for analog, okay, uh, usually we call it a uh, continuous analog. Okay, so the signal usually a continuous one, uh, whereas for digital, usually what we call discrete, discrete signal. Okay, 
So, uh, uh, and analog means that you can have any level of uh, level of signal, okay? Whereas for digital, you can have some specific level only, okay? Uh, an example here, it says that compared to your analog clock, do you still have your analog clock? Right now, most of you are using digital clock, right? Uh, but if you have this analog clock, okay, uh, the one that use quasi or kinetic movement, okay, so you can see that the the uh, the the hand of the clock will move continuous, right? It's not a discrete one; it will continuously uh, move around. Whereas for your digital clock, it's just struck, okay, uh, eight zero one, eight zero two, eight zero three, and so forth. Okay, so that is a discrete uh, kind of signal. So, um, like they data that they present, signal can also be either analog or digital. So I've already mentioned about this. Okay. Um, so if you have an analog signal has infinite uh, many level uh, of uh, intensity over a period of time, whereas your digital signal can only have a limited number of values. Okay. So what they are trying to say is that uh, for your analog. Okay, so for your analog, basically, for analog, so for analog, it will look something like this, the signal, whereas for digital, it's a discrete uh, and a kind of a square type of signal. Lah, okay? And also, usually, uh, the level that we mentioned is the... Uh, itself okay uh, it can be either uh, periodic or non-periodic uh, the periodic means that you have uh, some um, pattern lah, over uh, the whole signal you have a pattern say that you have a sine wave okay and it will replicate on uh, the other cycle okay it can be any period of time okay but it can replicate uh, on uh, the next cycle whereas for a non-periodic it means that you don't have any specific pattern, okay? So for this type of signal, usually we define in digital, whereas for the periodic one is where you use uh, uh, for analog system, okay? So analog transmission can be periodic, uh, but uh, digital usually you use non-periodic type of signal, okay? So that is what we can uh, mention. And for the periodic, uh, signal, uh, especially for your analog, it can be either a simple periodic or a composite periodic. Okay. So here uh, is what we can say that this is a simple periodic sine wave. Okay. Uh, and with respect to that, you have to identify some of the characteristic. One of it is the peak uh, amplitude and then the time. Okay. Uh, perhaps later on, we'll also uh, define what is frequency, what is bandwidth, and so forth, okay? But this is the basic signal. And with respect to uh, the period, uh, later on you'll see that you have uh, a relationship between period and frequency, which I think most of you already know, which is that uh, period is equals to one over frequency, right? Uh, and period itself is the, amount of time that is needed for signal to complete one cycle. So if you have one cycle within one second, it means that your uh, signal is one hertz. Okay? Uh, 
whereas your frequency it means that uh, how uh, frequent that the signal is being replicated within one second okay so that is why uh, frequency and period is actually uh, vice versa or uh, they call it inversely propor proportional right okay so that uh, you can actually define it uh, t equals to uh, one over frequency and uh, looking at this, you can see that if you have a 12 cycle or 12 pattern of your sine wave within one second, what you can say is that you have a 12 hertz of signal. Okay, so that is what it mentioned. Okay, because in frequency, it means that in one second, how many this similar pattern can be replicated or uh, can be useful? Okay, so if you are you are having 12 signal in one second then you can say that you have a frequency of 12 hertz. And then compare to this one where you have a signal uh, of uh, uh, perhaps more uh, lesser than that okay? uh, with a six uh, cycle. Okay? So you can say that this is a six hertz of uh, frequency. And uh, the period uh, and frequency has its own unit. Okay? And it can also be uh, multiplication or to, can be also defined in different uh, incubated uh, units. Okay? You can have your second, millisecond, microsecond, nanosecond, and microsecond. Uh, so uh, I think most of you already know how to convert this, right? Okay. And then you have also uh, your frequency, uh, which can be uh, also defined as hertz, kilohertz, megahertz, gigahertz, and terahertz. Okay. So these are uh, the terms that you uh, will need to use. Okay? So when you receive any of these questions, uh, plainly you need to know what are the units that is defined in the question and what are the units that you need to use uh, to process your uh, question itself. Okay? And at the end, what will be the unit that you need to uh, give for the final answer. Okay? So, if it's being given in megahertz okay, uh, in the question, uh, but you need to uh, do some calculation based on hertz. Okay, so you need to convert from megahertz to hertz. Okay, and finally, they say that uh, please put the answer in picohertz okay, or in gigahertz or terahertz. So you need to convert it into that unit. Okay, so please be uh, mindful about that. So this is an example where you have a frequency of 6 hertz okay? uh, and uh, you need to know what would be the period. Okay? So you can define that T equals to 1 over frequency, so 1 over 60 hertz okay? and you will get 0 0.0166 seconds uh, which is equals to uh, 0 0.0166 times 10 to the power of 3 milliseconds which is equal to 16.6 milliseconds. Okay? So this is how you can calculate. Right? Uh, and also uh, another example where you can uh, have a 100 milliseconds of period. Okay? So you need to know what will be the uh, conversion between millisecond to microsecond. So this can be also useful. Uh, and next, okay, uh, if you are being given a signal of 100 millisecond, what is the frequency in kilohertz? Okay, so you just plug in uh, F equals to 1 over period. Uh, your uh, period is 10 of minus 1 second or 100 millisecond. Okay, and you will get uh, 10 to the power of minus 2 kilohertz itself. Okay. Any question on this? Right. So, um, uh, within group, okay, uh, small group can be done. Uh, so within two or three minutes, okay, uh, can you face your friend okay, and uh, perhaps can you tell them what do you understand about periodic and non-periodic? Okay? And then I will get back and go around to see uh, your understanding. Okay? So perhaps you can tell your friend what do you understand uh, of periodic and the other one, what do you understand by a non-periodic signal? Yeah. Can we have that kind of conversation first and I'll go around? Yeah. Tell your friend. Those who are at home, right? 
Uh, so you ask yourself, either you understand what is periodic and non periodic signal. So what is periodic signal? What can you understand? already gone through is that we define periodic and non-periodic uh, whereby I mentioned that if you have a periodic kind of signal okay, uh, basically that is being used for analog transmission whereas for non-periodic is where you can use that for a digital transmission because in digital transmission we need to transmit zero or one right when you transmit a continuous of digital signal one one zero 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 one 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 zero one 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 it, it doesn't have any pattern, right? So you you we can mention that for a digital signal, it's usually a non-periodic. Then later on, uh, I also asked some of you, what do you understand about composite, right? So composite signal, basically you have uh, different harmonics of your frequency, which we'll see later, and it can be, uh, it can be combined together uh, within uh, the same diagram, okay? and you can use that for transmission. Uh, one of the example where you use this uh, uh, 
uh, signal uh, that you can uh, merge together okay, is where you can uh, use in frequency modulation okay, where you can uh, uh, modulate your frequency with respect to the KD frequency and then you can transmit the signal okay so that is an example of uh, a, non, uh, a composite signal okay. and uh, here the mention okay, uh, for instance when we talk about high frequency it means that you have a uh, a pattern that replicate very fast okay? so in very uh, very quick manner okay? whereas when you reach the frequency uh, you will see that uh, the, 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 the pattern uh, can be spun over a very longer time okay? so uh, if within one second say that if you have a uh, hundred uh, pattern in one second, then we can say that that is a high frequency. Okay, compared to, to that, that you have one uh, signal or one pattern in one second, it means that you have a very low frequency. Then, if the signal doesn't change, okay, at all, it means that you have zero frequency. Or if you have a uh, instantaneously uh, signal, okay, then we can say that the frequency is infinite. Then we also uh, have another term for the signal we call phase. Okay? So the phase is being defined as uh, the position of the wave relative to time zero. Okay? So in the next diagram, here you can see that this is the example or illustration uh, for you to identify what does phase mean. Okay? So if uh, the first signal uh, on the top one represents that uh, and it begins at zero okay, uh, on the time and also at the amplitude scale. Okay. Uh, when you have another signal that uh, started earlier, okay, so we can say that this is a 90 degrees of shift. Okay. And also if it starts um, uh, at this point, okay, so we can say that it's 180 degrees. Basically, uh, you just imagine that your frame is uh, fixed and then your signal can be moved around. Okay, so the shifted it means that you shift the signal. Okay, and uh, the period uh, that represent the shifted uh, we can define it as a degree. Uh, zero degrees means that uh, you are having it at the beginning of the signal, and then this is when you shift it back uh, a bit earlier. So it's a ninety degrees. Then you have 80 degrees, you can also have 270 degrees and 360 degrees, or which is actually zero degrees again. Okay, okay, so this is for the uh, phase definition. Okay, so the definition uh, here is that if you want to convert it, uh, or if you want to know what will be the phase of your signal, okay, so what you can use is that uh, 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi. Uh, so two pi region. So big this changes is a two pi region. Okay, two pi, right? So this is a two pi region. So this one two pi, two pi region. Okay, so from this, uh, this is another example, uh, perhaps that you can look into. Okay, so a sine wave uh, is an offset one of six cycle uh, with respect to the time zero. What is the phase in degrees and radian? So uh, in total, you will have three hundred sixty. Okay, so if you have one six of the three hundred sixty, is uh, sixty degrees. But if you want to convert it into uh, radian, so uh, you will have to convert it 60 times by 2 pi divided by six, uh, 360 radian. So basically, uh, if you guys don't know how to convert it, uh, you say that uh, if uh, 60 okay, so uh, if you have one six of it, is a uh, 360, okay, which is 60%. So 
when you have uh, then you have to times by two pi over three hundred sixty because uh, uh, you want to know how, out of this uh, three hundred sixty what is the uh, degree of it okay? times by two pi you will have one uh, pi over three radians so you can see that is a one point zero uh, four six radian okay? so right within one minute can you guys try that uh, on your own and you get the same answer how do you use your calculator that you uh, calculate it you have your computer you have your calculator, please turn on your calculator. If not, you can download a uh, scientific calculator that can mimic your physical calculator. Or if you are online on your PC, you can do that. Also. You have any questions? Data okay. Can I have your question? So in the uh, with your calculator, what you can do is that you can have the pi. Okay, uh, is already be key, key in into your calculator button, right? So you uh, or if you don't have it, then you have to remember lah. Pi is three point one four, right? Mathematics three point one four. Then you will still get it. Okay, another. Uh, characteristic or parameter that we also need to identify is what we call wavelength. Okay, how do you define the wavelength? Okay, the first line represents how we define the wavelength. So, wavelength is another characteristic of a signal through a transmission medium. So, uh, a wavelength itself is uh, actually the uh, the distance uh, propagation speed times by the period. Okay, so uh, this is how you define it. Okay, or if you guys have taken physics, you will uh, already remember uh, V equals to F lambda. Okay, so here the V is changed to C and it's uh, being defined as the propagation speed. So V equals to F lambda 
the one that you usually use. Okay? So those who already took physics, you will say that V is equals to F lambda. Okay. This is your speed. The F is your frequency and the lambda is your wavelength. Okay. So we want to define what is the wavelength. So we can have the speed and we can also have the frequency. Then we can define what is lambda. So in this example, uh, the wavelength of a red light is uh, with a frequency of 4 times 10 to the power of 14. Okay? And then uh, how does it know uh, what is the wavelength? Okay? So you have to uh, see transmission here, propagation speed over here, uh, because you are using uh, light transmission. Okay? So it defines that uh, the light frequency band is to, uh, ten, uh, 3 times 10 to the power of 8. Okay? So it, this is the wavelength. Uh, or the speed of your uh, light transmission. So that is why uh, your C here is 3 times 10 to the power of 8 divided by uh, the red light wavelength. Okay? And you will have 0 0.75 times to 10 to the power of minus 14, uh, 6 uh, meter. Uh, and uh, it's equals to uh, 0 0.75. So here it represents the where the signal can move lah. Okay, so here we define that the signal can move from your left hand side to your right hand side. Okay, uh, with respect to the transmission medium, uh, so you'll be able to transmit it. Okay, uh, between this period of time. Okay, so within that time, uh, you need to define what is your wavelength. So, so here, uh, speeding. A period of your signal, okay. So the time taken for your uh, one period of your signal to transfer uh, through the medium is what we define the wavelength. Okay. So here, uh, if this is a single uh, pattern of your wavelength, okay, the time to transfer through the medium is what we call the wavelength. So the next uh, characteristic that we can see is that we have what we call uh, the different type of uh, signal representation. Okay, so here we have two different type of signal representation. One is what we call a uh, frequency domain and the other one is a time domain. The time domain is the one that you've seen with the signal, uh, the sine wave signal, where your horizontal uh, graph is actually uh, a, a representative of time, okay? as you can see here. So it's a representation of time, okay? and a frequency domain where you have uh, the horizontal uh, graph represent the frequency domain. Okay? So this is a frequency domain, this is a time domain, uh, the, the, for the vertical one is still amplitude. So the difference is that this one, you can see uh, the signal in the time domain. So the pattern that usually you see is a time domain. Whereas if you look at the frequency, if it has only one frequency, then you will have only one uh, band uh, over there. Okay? But uh, in some, uh, for instance, uh, you can see that it has different harmonics. Okay? So you can see that it has multiple uh, stripes of it. So this is example when you have multiple signal uh, that being uh, separate together. So the color represent that the signal okay, it can be either uh, a signal that have a, a flat signal, okay, so with a frequency of zero, okay, because it doesn't have any pattern, so it is resides on zero. Okay, and then you can also have this uh, the blue one. Uh, at frequency of 8, okay, and then you have the black one uh, with a frequency of 16. So with respect to that, we can see that you have three different signals that can be represented uh, or converted from a time domain to a frequency domain. 
And uh, later on, you will see also that if you have this kind of uh, more than one signal that can be transmitted together and they can uh, actually, uh, what they call, envelope each, uh, with each other, okay? uh, the sum of it, okay? you, you can have another different pattern. Okay? But uh, you will see that as in a time domain, as a single signal that already composite. Okay, but in the frequency domain, you can still see that you have a different frequency uh, on the frequency domain um, representation. Uh. Okay, so with respect to that, okay, so we will we already see that uh, you can have uh, multiple signal. Okay, but uh, you uh, basically can be represented uh, into a time domain and a frequency domain. Uh, but those signal can actually be combined together uh, with some special devices okay, so that you're able to uh, push it together. So it will be something like this where uh, you merge it together. So when you transmit, you have this kind of signal. Basically, this signal is a composite signal that uh, perhaps contained from uh, three different uh, sources. Okay? But you combine them together before you transmit, and then this gives you a pattern of kind of this. And eventually, uh, you don't see this signal. You just see that that is the composite signal. This is the signal that we combine together. But uh, on the frequency domain, you can still see that you have different frequency band. Okay? So you have the frequency band of F3, F, and 9F. Okay, so this is what we call a harmonics of frequency, where you have the first one, uh, the first frequency, then you you have the third harmonics and also the ninth harmonics. Okay, so this can be uh, two different representation in your uh, signal. So sometimes when uh, you are perhaps one day uh, at a time, uh, you are asked by your boss or perhaps your colleague. Okay, can you have a frequency domain representation? So you will see something like this. Okay, uh, but if you are saying that, uh, can you show me a, a time domain? Okay, so you will see uh, this kind of signal that being represented. Okay, so don't be uh, amused if you're being uh, asked to do this different representation. Okay, so this uh, frequency. Uh, and um, as mentioned also, uh, if you have analog type of uh, uh, signal, okay, uh, and also you have a non-periodic type of one, okay, this kind of thing, uh, in time domain, you will see something like that. But in the frequency domain, you will see that it's a continuous uh, frequency. Okay? Uh, it has all the harmonics of the frequency. So uh, this is how it looks like at a... Uh, frequency band uh, with a frequency domain, right? Then you will also see that this is how it looks like if you have a periodic signal. Okay? This is non periodic, this is periodic. So with periodic, you have a kind of a line by line signal, whereas this one is a continuous signal. Here, one thing that you can also see is that the bandwidth is in the frequency band uh, where uh it's uh, in between this frequency okay, between 1000 and 5000 so that is why you have a bandwidth of 4000 hertz okay and then you also have this uh same thing okay 1000 to 5000 so you will have 4000 hertz so how do you get the bandwidth the maximum frequency minus the minimum frequency okay? so the bandwidth is just you need to know how how big is the band or how large is the frequency that you use. Okay, so like this one, if it's, this is a, a sine wave uh, with a frequency uh, range of 100 to 900. So if it asks what is the frequency band, then you have to find what is the high frequency and the lowest frequency. Uh, here, the highest frequency is 900 and uh, the lowest is 100 so you just minus up and you will have 800 hertz okay so that's the bandwidth okay so if you ask to draw then you have to draw 
that uh, one of the thing is that this is the voltage 10 volt being given okay and then you have your 100 300 500 700 and 900 but the bandwidth is still uh, between the high frequency and the lowest frequency okay so that would be your frequency band okay so this will be another example right so uh, here it says that uh, being given your bandwidth right 20 hertz so your B here is 20, right? And the highest frequency is 60. So your FH is 60. So you rearrange, you will get what is your lowest frequency, which is 4 hertz. Okay, I, I think this one is just uh, simple for you guys. Okay, and then if you want to draw, then this would be... Uh, Right, so try this. Can you draw this? A non periodic composite signal. Okay, so uh, highlight what are the things that you need to do. A non periodic signal, bandwidth of 200 kilohertz, media frequency is 140 kilohertz, and the peak amplitude is 20 hertz. The two extreme frequency has an amplitude of zero. Draw the frequency domain. Okay, so you need to draw a frequency domain. Can you try that? Without looking uh, to the other slide. Which slide it? Continue that. Uh, then predict signal.
So uh, what you can do is that uh, this is a non-periodic signal and uh, it says that you need to have uh, a middle frequency. So what you can draw is that you can draw this one is a frequency band and this is amplitude. And uh, with respect to this one, you have a maximum of 20, 20 volt, right? Okay, and the max uh, middle is 140 kilohertz, right? So draw a dotted line, and this is the middle point. And now you need to identify what is the lowest point and the highest point. Since you say that you have 200 kilohertz, right, uh, of bandwidth, meaning that between here to here is 200 kilohertz. Okay, so going back, uh, if it's in the middle, so 140 minus by 100 here should be 40. Yeah. So this is at 40 kilohertz, and this will be at 240 kilohertz. Okay, and here you see that it starts from zero, and uh, here also zero, so you will draw here. Here to here. Okay, and then what I can suggest is that you shade it that represents this is a non periodic uh, signal. Okay, so you will get something like this uh, with respect to that question. Okay, anybody doesn't uh, have any question? How about your friend? Uh, online, do you guys have any question? Nicholas, Muhammad Maun, Abham, okay, Nor Hanan, no, sir. Nor Hanan is already at home. Eh? Yeah. 
at AWP is what? No. No. English style. Kenapa? <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to see this camera. Okay. So if no question, uh, perhaps we can move to the next slide. All right. All right. So now we can focus on the digital signal. Uh, most of you, or perhaps you have taken uh, digital signal uh, processing or digital signal system, right? So in digital signal system, we say that uh, in a digital signal, we only have two bits, right? Zero and one. Okay. So we need to represent this zero and one. Why do we need to represent this zero and one? Because uh, on the device end, uh, compared to kind of analog transmission where you have different level and any uh, what they call it any level of signal, uh, it will be very difficult to determine, right? So what you can uh, do is that instead of using analog, you use digital signal. Where digital signal, you just need to identify either this signal is zero or this signal is one. If you are in between, so you need to decide. Okay, but if it's majority to the high bit uh, or one, so you can say that this signal is one because your signal will have to go through these uh, different devices, different transmission line, and it can also be uh, attenuated. Means that it can be changed. The signal can be changed into some form of perhaps uh, uh, the the uh, the amplitude also will be changed. So. Uh, when you receive at the receiver, you need to determine either this is zero and one. It's, so it is much more simpler compared if you have an analog signal because you have a lot of levels. Okay, so in digital rather uh, than you have in analog signal, you have to determine which level that you need to uh, receive. Okay, so you just need to determine this is level zero or level one. Okay, your signal that you receive, I need to know is zero or one only. So that is why. Uh, we use digital signal rather than analog uh, transmission. Okay, so we have the zero on one. Okay, and it can be represented by this. Uh, it can be uh, zero on one, uh, which is uh, what they call it uh, two levels. Okay, or you can use uh, two bits that represent uh, four levels. Okay, you can have more uh, bits to represent more level, lah, right? So, with respect to this, you can see that if you need to know, uh, if you need to just have two different level, you can use one bit. Okay. So you can say that uh, the level number of level. Okay. So. So you can say that number. Number of levels will be equals to to the power of your bit size. Right? Okay. So here, if you have one bit to the power of one, you have two levels. So this is where you have two levels: level one and level two. Whereas for this is the number of level is equals to two to the power of two, right? Uh, so you have four. So you have four level that you can represent this signal. Okay. And with respect to that, you will also can uh, interchange between uh, if you've been given the number of level. Okay. So you can determine what would be the number of bits. Okay. So here. Number of bits per level represent by log two, okay, yeah, uh, or log two number of uh, level lah. So the number of number here is uh, eight. So you need to know what is the number of bits that we use is log two, uh, uh, log eight of two, sorry, uh, log eight of two. So you will get three. So now you know that uh, if you want to get uh, from number of level, just now. You use two to the power of number of bits. Whereas if you want to know the bits, 
number of bits you need to know uh, or you can log two of your level So here, is an, an example, uh, a digital signal has nine levels. Uh, so how many bits are needed per level? Can you try, uh, can you guys do that? Uh, for those who are online, perhaps you can answer what would be your number of level. Try. Number of the answer is there, but how can you get to that answer? Can you that? It's given to you uh, levels. You have nine levels. How do you get number of it? What do you get? So, can you use the point one seven to get the point of the So, what's your, what, what will be your solution? Can you have only point one seven to You have this to be an easy thing, So, how many levels do you have? Comment, eh? No comment from uh, the people out there. Hello. <laughs> four. 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 So basically, yeah. Uh, 
from this okay because one thing that we need to do is that you need when you have a request you need to design a bag based on your request right so this customer say that i need only nine levels right but the thing is that you have to match with the standards right now the standard is that if you want to have number of level you is it to the power of two right huh? so now when you do the level just now okay so number of level is nine equals to nine right so what you need to do is that uh you need to know number of bits which is equal to not nine not nine bits two and you get your most of you will get 3.17 but this one is not an integer value right so you cannot go down you can go up so you need to use four so with respect to four how many levels that you have? So number of level will be equals two to the power of four, right? Which is sixteen. So that is more than enough, lah. But you you have to design more. So basically, it's it's much more expensive in the terms of designing lah, because you have to to design more than what required right uh, so that is how you look at this uh question any question on this at home are you guys okay i think you are sleeping yeah right so here it says that uh, most digital signals are non predict and task period and frequency are not appropriate characteristic. Uh, so you can uh, you need to have different characteristics for digital rather than bandwidth. Okay, now you can uh, define your characteristic as bit rate. Okay, so uh, a bit rate is actually number of bits per second. Okay, number of bits per second that you use to represent your data. Uh, for instance, here you have uh, a document of 100 pages per second, right? Uh, what is required bit rate of the channel? Assume the page is an average of 24 lines, uh, lines with 80 characters of each line. So uh, for one page is equals to 24, one page equal to 24 times by 100 so you have uh, 2400 what you call it character uh, char, eh? and uh, this chart you have 10 100 pages which is equal to 240,000 right and then uh it says that uh with a rate of 100 pages per second so uh you have to times by here okay a character usually is be defined one character is usually be defined by eight bits okay so then you have this eight over here Right? 80. This one is 80. 34 by 80. This is 34 by 80. Uh, you will get some different value. So this value is over here. Okay, and you will get this number. Then you have to times by 8 uh, to represent uh, the number of uh, uh, feet per second. Okay. So you can calculate this uh, based on uh how many character that you have uh in the page which is 24 times by 8 and then uh how many pages that you have uh so you have 100 pages per second so that is how many character per 
second that you can transmit then uh, usually one character is being represented by 8 bits is an ASCII uh, standard okay so you have to times by 8 uh, and eventually you will have this 1.536 uh, FBPS okay so the one that we is defined here is that you have eight one character equals to eight bits So other than bit rate for digital, we also define the bit length. So in bit length, we need to know what is the propagation speed times the, that uh, times by the bit duration. Okay, so this is uh, being uh, calculated uh, propagation speed times by the bit duration. Any questions on that? Bule? Everyone can. Okay. <laughs> Any other question? Tak ada? Macam nak balik rumah kan? <laughs> Those who have uh, left with me, you cannot go home yet. Because we have a session at 3. Okay. Uh, but perhaps the rest of you are going back. So I would like to wish uh, all the students uh, Indians and those who celebrating Deepavali, right? Uh, happy Deepavali. Uh, those who not uh, celebrating, have a nice, well, we call it, it's not holiday, lah. have a nice online course, online uh, uh, learning. Okay? Uh, and uh, I'll see you during next session, which is uh, online, lah, not on a physical one. Right? Do you, you know that next week, it's uh, fully online, right? So we don't have the physical one. Okay. Uh, but do you think I should be here or online? So I will be online. Okay. Uh, so I'll see you uh, for the next session. It's online. Uh, on another note is that uh, for the lab, I would say that uh, we will postpone the lab uh, next week okay, to the week after that so that uh, we can have a physical one because I'm not so sure how I can communicate with you guys if it's an online session, right? So, do you guys okay with that? Uh, we will try to quickly figure out how to finish faster for the lab, okay? But the thing is that I, I don't think we'll be able to do a, uh, an online session for the lab itself. Okay, right. Um, we have discussed about the signal okay, that can be transmitted between sender and receiver through either analog or digital signal, okay? But uh, in between the transmission, there's a possibility that the signal can either be lost or be attenuated, okay? So these are some of the uh, cause of the impairment, okay? Uh, due to some reasoning, okay? It can be either due to the device itself, it can be either due to the medium, it can be either due to some uh, external sources. Okay? So we can define that there are three causes of impairment. Uh, the first one is the attenuation, the distortion, and the noise. Okay? So what are these uh, uh, impairment that represent in our digital signal transmission or actually medium tra uh, analog transmission also? Uh, because with respect to the attenuation, that is why Rather than using analog, we want to have a digital signal because of this attenuation. Because the uh, the power of the signal can be attenuated, uh, or the pattern of the signal can be also changes throughout the medium of transfer. So rather than you have to guess what will be level of your analog, so rather than that, you just need to identify like, either it's a zero or one in a digital transmission. So, uh, attenuation basically is the loss of energy. In here, you represent by the voltage. Lah. The voltage uh, on your vertical uh, graph is that uh, the voltage of the signal. The voltage can uh, perhaps, uh, due to the some uh, impairment, it, it can uh, be lost. Okay? So, the, uh, the attenuation means loss of energy. So, when a signal 
a simple or composite travel through a medium, it loses some of its energy in the overcoming the resistance of the medium. So basically, uh, there are a few of reasoning uh, of the energy loss. One of it is because of the uh, medium of transmission. Okay, sometimes when you transfer it, uh, your cable will be hot. Okay, that is where your signal uh, being transferred into uh, heat. Eh? So uh, the signal uh, has been uh, changed into heat, so the energy will be lost. Okay? So that is why a uh, wired channel energy signal get warm if not hot after a while. Okay? So uh, how to uh, overcome this is that you need to have repetition or kind of uh, energy booster back. So you what the energy booster is what we call amplifier, okay, amplification or amplifier to amplify the signal. Okay, so after you have gone through a very long distance, what you can do at the receive uh, at that intermediate uh, system is that you can boost the uh, or amplify the signal so that the signal can uh, get to a higher level back. Okay? So this is an example. Uh, in transmission. Sometimes you are not between two different end users. You have to go through intermediate nodes. Okay? So this represents where you have uh, one intermediate node. Okay? From the sender to the receiver, you have uh, an intermediate node. So here, where it represents that the signal, uh, the origin signal, then after the transmission, the energy loss. So you have the signal with a weaker uh, energy okay? or weaker better. Uh, what they call it amplitude. So you have to amplify and then you send it through the uh, medium okay, before it can be received by the end user. Or perhaps uh, this is a transmission medium received by the device, amplify it first before you can use it for uh, to go to the upper layer. And with respect to the loss, okay, uh, usually uh, engineers, uh, they will have what they call the term of 3 dB loss. Okay? 3 dB loss, okay, meaning that uh, it's been uh, minus 3 dB. Okay? Uh, dB is the decibel, okay? uh, the, the, the unit of decibel, uh, where uh, the decibel or the loss actually uh, being calculated by the 10 of uh, P2 over P1 uh, to the base 10, okay? meaning that uh, the P1 is your original power, P2 is the power that uh, you receive. Okay? So if you have uh, half power, okay, meaning that you have 0 0.5 uh, of your P1, so that is why here it use uh, P2 is 0 0.5 of P1, half of the P1 power, so it receives half the, of the power. So you have 0 0.5 P1 over P1, so you have log of 0 0.5 to the base of 10, so you have minus 3 dB. So the term minus 3 dB is when you have half of the power. Okay? So when you get a uh, kind of uh, question, what does it mean by uh, 3, minus 3 dB, or uh, what we call uh, 3 dB loss, is the term that we use uh, that represents it is half power, okay? half of the power. But you can also use that uh, to calculate uh, the signal boost. Okay? Uh, where here you say that uh, you can have uh, the uh, the signal being boost to a tenth of your uh, in, uh, your transmission power. Okay? So with respect to that, your P two right now becomes tens uh, of your P one. So with like log of ten, you will have ten dB. Okay? So if you have uh, ten times of your power. Uh, in the dB calculation, you will uh, have some uh, values, but here uh, with respect to 10 uh, power of uh, your P1, so you have 10 dB uh, in a positive manner. Okay? So it's when it gives you an, a positive one, means that it is an increase. Here you have negative, eh? so minus 3 dB or 3, 3 dB loss is a negative one. Okay? So with respect to that, uh, every system has its own uh, losses uh, and gain. So what uh, we need to do is that we can actually calculate. Okay, so what's the medium of transmission? Uh, 
uh, either it gains or losses signal. Uh, the device itself can has uh, gain or losses, and uh, in between all the devices that it has to go through, it has uh, losses or gain. So with respect to that, your 3DB, you can use that to calculate the total gain or loss. Okay? So with respect to the decibel, so here it says that if you have a signal that travels from point 0.1 to point 0.4, the signal is generated by the time it reaches point 0.2. Between points two and three, the signal is amplified. And again, between three and four, the signal is uh, amplified. Okay, so you can use that decibel to calculate the number of uh, gain or uh, attenuate. Okay, so you just can simply add or minus it out. Okay, so with respect to that, you will uh, get the number of uh, signal either is gain or loss. So this is how uh, it represents. Then we also have what we call distortion. Just now is just uh, uh, when the energy is being uh, suppressed. Eh? So we call it uh, attenuation. Now you have what we call a, a distortion. Distortion here means that the signal is being distorted. The pattern of the signal itself is being distorted or being changed. Okay? So distortion here means signal change of uh, its form or shape okay so you wanted to identify either there's a change or not and uh, at the end you wanted to identify uh, what what would be the uh, information the signal that you receive okay so here what you can see is that say that you transmit this composite signal okay at the sender but you receive this kind of signal that already being distorted right so you can either either uh, you the receiver can either say that you can still recognize it or if it doesn't totally uh, uh disrupted or change uh, so you are unable to uh figure it so you need to either scrap the information that you receive or you need to get them to retransmit okay so you need to identify what would you like uh, what would you like to do after you receive and thirdly, uh, it's what we call noise. Okay? So noise, something like your background noise, right? Right now, I have a very uh, low noise. Okay? So because I, I'm the one only uh, speaking right now and there's no other people in this room that are talking, so no noise. Okay? Whereas if while I'm talking, you guys also talking, so that is where you have a high level of noise and meaning that the message cannot be transfer or receive by the receiver properly, right? Okay, so when I talk, you also talk, okay? Everyone talk, okay? So no talk, ah. <laughs> you get nothing, right? So one of the distortion is that the noise, the noise can come from, from any uh, internal devices and also external, okay? Uh, for instance, when you use tra your uh, Wi-Fi transmission 2.5 gigahertz, you can have a noise from your microwave that use the same frequency. Right through it, and or uh, you use your Wi-Fi, and uh, perhaps you have only one channel that occupied by everyone. Okay, so true. Also, uh, you have that kind of uh, noise. Okay, so the noise uh, can be from the thermal noise, induced noise, crosstalk, impulse noise, uh, and may corrupt the signal. Okay, so uh, it can be any medium internal of the devices as also external from the devices itself right so what it did is that it will actually implies to the signal and it can corrupt the signal and rather than you receive the transmitted signal as it is you will see that the pattern is totally being uh, changed okay so with respect to that if you use this analog type of transmission then you'll be having difficulties to retrieve back the information that uh, you are trying to transmit okay so uh, with respect to that this noise will actually will um, really interfere but as compared to your um, what they call analog signal uh, so you can also have uh, a digital signal so digital signal also when you transmit you have a noise and there's a possibility that <coughs> the noise will interfere to your signal but with respect to this compared to that uh, the analog one, 
you will see that you can still see the pattern like i mentioned maybe this one is high level level one that you want to represent this one is level two so with respect to that you know that uh, if it's at this point okay below the zero is level two uh, this one is uh is perhaps this is level one this is level two so above that is level two so you can still predict what the signal that we transmit okay so with respect to that you will see that digital is better from analog uh, but the same goes for the digital say that after uh, you run the signal throughout the transmission medium and uh, it's already suppressed the power and the need just now and also uh, it has been uh, 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 the energy has been reduced okay so the signal can go down and then the noise is higher than the signal so then here is totally have difficulty to identify, right? Here your digital, you still able to identify. Here you cannot identify due to the signal is very low uh, compared to this one. So we respect to this. This is what call, we call signal to noise ratio. SNR is a signal to noise ratio. It means that if the signal is high uh, compared to the noise, then you have a good SNR. If the signal is uh, low compared to the uh, noise, okay, uh, then you have a bad uh, received information, right? So this is how you define. So SNR is the actually defined as the average signal power over average noise power, and you can uh, put that as a SNR dB uh, in dB form, where you have ten log ten SNR. Okay, so this would be. Uh, how you define for digital signal, right? So for SNR, so you just need to know what is the power, what is the noise, okay? And then you just divide it. Uh, you get the SNR, okay? Based on this, okay? average signal power over average noise power. But if you want to convert it into dB, so it's the ten log of your SNR based on. And this represents that if the noise uh, is zero compared to the, uh, the the signal, okay, this is what we call noiseless channel, okay, because the noise is uh, considered as none. Okay? okay. Last but not least, okay, on the data rate limit, so converting between analog to digital. Okay, so we have these two kind of uh, theorem. When you want to convert from analog to digital, uh, you can use either what they call Nyquist theorem or Shannon theorem. Okay. So for Nyquist, it is for noiseless channel. For uh, how uh, and Shannon is for noisy channel. Okay, so this is how you can uh, represent your signal. So what you need to do with that, you can use your uh, like this theorem uh, to convert your signal uh, be between analog to digital. So how do you do that? Okay, for that case, your bit rate, if you want to design, okay, it should be two times of the bandwidth, right? Uh, and then time ten uh, times log uh, the level number of signal level uh, to the base of two. Okay, so this will actually uh, give you what would be the bit rate of your transmission. So say that uh, you wanted to have this uh, information being transferred, okay, uh, and you have decided that this is the number of level of uh, uh, data of uh, bit that you want to have, okay. Uh, so you can calculate what would be the bit rate. For instance, here, if you have a bandwidth of three hundred hertz. Uh, and then uh, you wanted to transmit into with two signal level, okay? so the maximum bit rate can be calculated as two times uh, the bandwidth times by the uh, level of number of level uh, base two dot base two. Okay? So you have this bit per second. Another example over here. Uh, this is for noiseless channel. A signal with four signal level. So here, the four signal level use to insert over here, and we set two bits uh, for each level. The maximum bit rate can calculate. So you have to calculate 
what will be the bit rate? The, this one is the bandwidth that seemed to the example previously. Okay. Uh, this one is just a uh, constant that you have to include, right? And the four is actually the uh, signal level. Okay, so uh, this is the other way on how you can calculate uh, rather than you calculate the bit rate. So you uh, based on the bit rate, perhaps you need to know what is the level. So what you can do is that uh, you know what is the bit rate. Okay, uh, then you need to uh, re realign your calcul your calculation so that you're able to find what is the uh, level of uh, bits that you need to use. Okay, so here. It defines 98.7 level. So now, again, you have to decide it. Either you have to go uh, 60, uh, 1 to 8 level because if we have 64 levels, okay, uh, you, are, you are lesser than that, okay, but the bit rate is much more lower. Okay, but if you go 1 to 8 level, then your bit rate is higher. Okay? Right? And this is uh, for not lost, uh, for noiseless channel. Okay, uh, so this is for noisy channel. So you have your capacity is equal to bandwidth time log one plus signals to noise ratio. Okay, so this will be uh, equation for the channel capacity calculation. So this is how it looks like. If it's given to you, uh, the signal to noise ratio is zero. So you can calculate that the capacity uh, is equal to zero. Okay, so yes, uh, okay, so is almost zero. And this is another example for it, and so forth. Okay, so last but not least, okay, second time, say <laughs> last but not least, uh, is the performance. Okay, so the performance uh, can be either uh, measured by hertz and also by bit per second. Uh, both on analog and digital, right? So if you are being given uh, the given that okay, the bandwidth of the seven line is four kilohertz for voice and data, assume the bandwidth of the line of transmission is five six four four bits per second using a sophisticated model uh, to change the signal to analog. Okay, so what is this? I think it's not calculated. Uh, the other performance is throughput. Okay. Uh, it's a measure of how fast we can actually send data through the network. Okay. So uh, you measure okay, how your how how fast okay, uh, you can send your data, say that uh, one bit, uh, how fast it can reach the other end. Okay. So that is uh, how you calculate the throughput. Okay. And the throughput usually must be uh, lower than the number of even bandwidth. Lah. Okay, so if your bandwidth is actually one uh, megabit per second, okay, so you cannot go further than that. Okay, so or less uh, from there. Right? So the throughput here is based on uh, say that now you have uh, 10, uh, 12,000 of frames per minute okay, uh, with a bandwidth of 10 megabit per second. Uh, what is the throughput for the network? Okay, so you can calculate the throughput by uh, calculating the number of uh, bits per second. Okay, so now you calculate that uh, you have 120, uh, 12, it's just like this. Lah. You have frames, something like this. Okay, and this is from 1 until 1200,000. And each of these carry 10,000 bits. Okay. So in total, you have to times this number with this number. Okay. And uh, because this is per minute, so you have to divide by 60. So you have 2 Mbps. So this is within uh, the 10 megabit per second. Okay. Because the network bandwidth is 10 megabit per second. So it's still one fifth of the bandwidth. So this one is okay, meaning that you can still increase the number of bits uh, because the throughput is two Mbps compared to the network, which is only ten Mbps. Okay. Then we also have this performance, what we call latency. Latency is that 
when you have your devices okay, uh, transmitting through the medium, right? So you can have what we call transmission delay. This is the transmission delay. Uh, where is it? Uh, the transmission delay. Then uh, perhaps this is a switch or router over here. Okay. So within this switch or router, we have some processing. That is where you have the queuing processing queuing time, okay, and also the processing delay uh, can be on this device, this device, this device, this device, plus the propagation delay is the time that you transmit uh, between uh, get the information through the medium of transfer. This is what we call a propagation delay. So the latency is actually the submission of all the transmission uh, delay that we have uh, all over the network. Okay, so. Uh, here, you don't have to know what is the propagation time delay, transmission time delay, queuing delay, processing delay. Perhaps in uh, other course, you will will see that. Okay, but you need to know that the latency can have uh, multiple uh, component of delay, and you have to sum it up so that you're able to calculate what is the latency. Yeah. Then uh, we have jitter. Uh, jitter is uh, also delay, uh, but uh, jitter is it can be from any medium lah, uh, because in the inconsistency of because of uh, your network itself. Okay? When you send your packet, uh, sometimes it doesn't use the same path. When you have the packet number one and the hundred packets, every packet perhaps doesn't use the same path, and with respect to that. The delay will vary. So jitter will actually define that uh, you have this different uh, time of transmission uh, because the transmission is going through different uh, path or, or whatsoever process. So if the delay of the first packet is 20 seconds, for the second is uh, 45 milliseconds, uh, the third is 40, uh, 40 milliseconds, the real uh, time application that uses the packet and just jitter. So it just defines that you have a range of different delay uh, called jitter that uh, represent that uh, the data, uh, the packet doesn't have a specific uh, time limit or rate of uh, delay. Okay. As a summary, okay, so with respect to that, we need to, uh, by now, okay, so you already know how to define what is amplitude, you know what is phase, know what is uh, frequency okay. uh, with respect to the signal uh, also value and so forth. Okay. And then you also uh, seen that uh, the signal representation can be divided into two what is what we call time domain where the horizontal uh, is a uh, time okay, and the frequency domain where the horizontal plot will be having the frequency uh, domain. We also have illustrate the composite signal, okay, uh, and uh, determine the properties of analog and digital. Like where in analog you define bandwidth, okay, uh, whereas for digital you define the bit rate, bit length, bit duration. Okay, uh, also we have seen the impairment, uh, where if you can have jitter, you can have uh, uh, the uh, transmission delay, okay, and also you can have uh, some other distortion. Then uh, last but not least, also we have seen that for network performance, okay, uh, we define analog throughput latency and also jitter, uh, so that we able to uh, define what are the performance of your network. Okay. So now I open for any question. If there's any, uh, let's see, uh, you guys. <laughs> Okay. I'm open for any question or anything that you want to discuss. Anything that important in this chat? Uh, thank you. Okay. Any question? Right there. Right hand side. Video, left hand side. 
front, back, middle, and online. Sorry, uh, I don't know how to make the uh, camera follow me. It doesn't follow me. Okay, so maybe next time I'll leave on that. Okay? But now we are online, so it's hybrid. Uh, and uh, for next week, as I mentioned, we will only have a lecture session, which is totally online. Uh, whereas for the lab session, uh, we, we will only do that when you come back physically, right? So next week, no tutorial or lab session. Okay. So anything else? If not, I would like to thank everyone. So uh, have a nice holiday if you are uh, going back. So have a nice travel, uh, carefully drive as well, right? So if not, thank you very much and I'll see you right back. If you don't have any uh, support letter or you don't have any medical I consider that Thank you.